I'm going to share my screen again. Can you see my screen? Yes, and I think that we are recording. Yes. Yeah. Cool. OK, nice. Hello, everyone, again. Uh, how you are having fun coding today? <laughs> Uh, now I'm going to introduce you a bit more uh, on the SDK and let's try to understand what will be a typical workflow using the SDK. So we come to this slide again. Uh, Luis has teach us how to initiate uh, D2 and how to make the login. And now I'm going to try to show you how to sync the metadata, how to sync the data, and how to fetch the data. Uh, and then we could start working and load data, and so the flow could be repeated. But now we are going to focus on the data synchronization and the metadata synchronization. Okay, uh, then how how is the SDK composed? I'm going to present you the SDK data access layer. Uh, so the SDK provides a bunch of classes that eases the access and the operation with the database and the API. Uh, so it will hide uh, to the developer all the complexity of accessing and synchronizing. And the developer will only work uh, with the two, uh, the modules and the repositories. So the SDK will hide uh, the database and API access. So, what is the first thing a developer will do? Well, <laughs> instantiate D2. This is what just uh, Luis has explained. And just remember, uh, for the instantiation, uh, we need an Android contest and this optional configuration parameters like the app name, app version, et cetera, that we just uh, made this exercise. Once D2 is instantiated uh, directly from D2, it's possible to access the modules and they are used uh, as a wrapper for related functionality. So a module uh, will contain some repositories, uh, like for example, uh, the program module will uh, have the program repository, uh, but also some services and helpers. Uh, it will have uh, like a pretty helper or a geometric helper, image helper, and so on. So if you enter D2, you're going to see a lot of modules. Uh, and you can find some of the different modules here in this slide, like the enrollment module, event module, prime module, relationship module, and so on. So these are uh, some of the modules that the SDK will, uh, will present to you. Uh, OK, and then a repository. When we enter a repository from a module, uh, we can see that a repository is a half of a shade for the database, where you can uh, read the metadata, you can read grade the data, and they also offer a builder composition with a compiled and validation. Uh, one of the advantages of a builder composition is that if you want to access the database and you write an SQL sentence, and write a typo in a file name, probably you will then uh, know it until runtime. But with this uh, kind of composition, it's less likely to make a mistake and you can detect it when you're writing the code. Uh, repository also has similar syntax to the web API, like filters, nested fields, and pitching. But still, uh, through the SDK, uh, queries uh, can still be performed. So for example, here in the track entity module, we will find something like the track entity types, track entity instances, track entity data value repository, and so on. And also a reset value manager, which is a, a helper. So now I'm going to get into some code uh, with some samples. Uh, as Luis just explained, uh, the first thing to do is to configure the SDK, uh, which is that line that we just did. And after distanciation, uh, following the typical workflow, we will, will be logging in. 
So this one is just a, remind, a, remind, uh, a reminder slide. Now that we are logging, we can start using the D2. The first step uh, we are going to do is download the metadata. So for that, we are going to be able to uh, enter to the metadata module and then just uh, call the method blocking download or download if you want to do it in a reactive way. So once we just sync the metadata, now we can start downloading our data. Uh, for that, uh, we have uh, some other modules. For example, the track entity module will allow us to download the track entities. The event module will allow us to download a single events. And the aggregated module will allow us to uh, download some aggregated data. So after that, when we just download and synchronize all our metadata and data, we are maybe want to, to show the data in the application. So we want to fetch the, that data. So for fetching the data, the, the data uh, we can do, for example, in this event module, call to the event repository, and then just call the get method. So that will return all the events that we have in our database. Uh, but if we wanted just to have some of them or we wanted page, we can call this method, get page, we will return a live data, which is an Android observable data holder class that will help you to show the data inside a recycler view. The repository also uh, have another method like count to know the number of events that you have stored in your database. But what if uh, you don't want all the events? So then you can filter. And the filter uh, could be one of them, like the organization unit. So you are going to be able to filter by organization unit, and you pass the organization unit UID, or for example, by event date, uh, calling the after operator, and then passing a, a date. So we are, in this case, you are going to have all the events from this organization unit that is after the event date. And then you call get. Uh, the filter operators depend of the type. So all the operators will have the generic ones like equals, not equals, in, not in, null, not null. But if there is a Boolean, you are going to have also the is true or is false. Uh, the strings, we are going to have also the like. For numbers, we're going to have smaller than or greater than. And for dates, we're going to have something like before, after, or in period, which is an operator which accepts uh, the period scheme uh, that we provide on the period repository in order to filter dates inside this period. Also, we can order. For example, if we want to order by event date, we could just call uh, the method order by, and uh, in this case, the event date. We have uh, the ability to order by descending or ascending. Well, in this case, it's descending. Uh, and if you want to get some nested fields, uh, you're going to have to call a method like this one, starting with with. Uh, because um, in the database, we are just uh, return the entities that are stored in the table. But you want, for example, uh, to have the track entity data values uh, for the events, you should do something like that. And they will be nested in the object that you are retrieving with the get method. And also, uh, the SDK provides some utility classes. Uh, like one of them are to evaluate some logic, other of them are helpers, the pro indicator engine, the validation rules. But we are going to see that uh, more deeply in, I guess, tomorrow, Victor will tell us. So, OK, now we are going to see two exercises. Uh, the first of them is uh, to sync the metadata and to sync the data. 
So we are gonna uh, want to sync the metadata, uh, sync the 10 TIs, 10 events, and the aggregated data. So for that, the initial branch is that one, and the class that we are gonna be in, in where we are gonna be coding is the main activity. So for that, remember that uh, before uh, checking out uh, to this branch, you have to commit your, your changes in the branch before. After this exercise, we're gonna do another one, which is uh, list the params uh, in the registration data capture scope and order them by the display name. And uh, for this exercise, uh, we are gonna use the, this initial branch and we're gonna use this program activity class. So I think that's everything. Do you miss anything? Do you have any question? I would say that we can stop recording now.